Tonight on the Kiwi Football Fix, it's Ambassador Central as we chat Ferns football with debutante Michaela Foster. Chris Wood phones home at 2am and of course we answer the call, why wouldn't we? The Wellington Phoenix score from the penalty spot, woohoo! And they also beat Weston. And goalkeepers go cray in the EPL. We weren't able to bring you a Kiwi football fix last week due to the state of emergency created by Cyclone Gabrielle. Now, to all of those people who uh, have been displaced because of it and to those who have lost loved ones, our condolences to you. To our viewers who might be able to help out a little bit or a lot, please consider making a donation to the Red Cross Disaster Fund. Our thanks to you. Yeah, plenty to get excited about on the Kiwi Football Fix this week and heaps to get excited about with our guests on the couch, Maya Jackman, Ferns FIFA icon. Great to see you back again. Great to be here. Love being between you two blokes. Yeah, why wouldn't you? And Seamus <laughs> Martin, the sartorially elegant Seamus Martin. Talk us through your football fashion. The, uh, the suits seem to be going quite well for me and... <laughs> uh, I actually got a, a win that Jacob Spoonley was keen on following suit, excuse the pun, um, and was going to wear his Olympic blazer, so I thought I'd beat him to the punch, seeing he's on next week, and I've gone with my London, guy. my London 2012 blazer when I was uh, team manager for the under-23s in that, uh, that particular tournament. That, Still fits like a glove. Is that where they made you eat 100 cheeseburgers? <laughs> uh, no one made, no one oh, ma no one that, made, no one made on me purpose, eat 100 cheeseburgers. Was on I, uh, it wasn't 100, it was 14. It was oh. a competition with Roland Jeffrey. 14 cheeseburgers. Physio. Um, yeah, the things you do in Olympic Village. I don't want to. I don't want to talk too much about that. You would. You'd have some Olympic Village stories, surely, Mike. No, I never got into an Olympic oh, Village. No, yeah. sorry, sorry, Very sorry. Far. Didn't Very mean far. to bring that up. Yeah. Jeez, well, Maya, build yourself up with uh, what you're wearing today. Well, talking to physios, I'm. Uh, I'm actually helping with um, Haiti at the moment um, on their World Cup campaign. So they've um, uh, brought me in, and I've, I've taken one of their shirts and. Uh, Great bunch of girls. I want to say a, a shout out to Milan and Gabby, who are the English speaking, or well, there's a few English speaking ones there, and um, most of them speak French. So I come in, they say bonjour, I say bonjour, croquette, baguette, and that's about all I had. <laughs> yeah, and, and then it's really. silent, silent treatment, um, pretty much. I can't talk, talk to them. But yeah, right. um, lovely team. I can't wait to, um, well, the, you know, they're through. That, yeah, they're here, they're, they're playing, they're a great team, they're a, gr they're a team to look for, I reckon. I reckon. Mm. Awesome. All right. Yeah. The thoughts of Maya Jackman. I'm wearing Croatia away from Jacob Spoonley's lounge room floor. It has had a wash this time. Hopefully I don't choke on the um, dog hair. Uh, let's talk about onside, offside. Maya, what's got you onside with football over the last seven days? Oh, look, I'm super excited about um, the World Cup, this playoff tournament that's here in New Zealand. It's getting, look at this, the fans are getting excited. That guy's strangling himself. But, you know, there's, there's lots of stuff going on and it's, you know, there, there's 10 teams here fighting for three, three spots. Um, this is Papua New Guinea, one of our OFC friends. And, um, yeah, just... Just a, a, a lot of excitement going on to, to build up into this World Cup that's happening in July and, um, and again, go Haiti. Seamus, you're on a similar tip, aren't you? Yeah, you mentioned Papua New Guinea, Maya, and um, look, everyone knows I've got a soft spot for Oceania, Oceania football. It's, it's been great to see PNG at this level. Um, and I think, you know, they, um, they made a good account for themselves. I was up in Papua New Guinea for a couple of years um, during an under-20 World Cup that they hosted. A few of the players have come through and graduated to the senior team. They had their chances against Panama. I was at 1-0. I thought they could sneak one here. They could maybe go through. It wasn't the case, but the coach, Spencer Pry, was effusive in his praise for the team afterwards. And it just shows that with the right opportunities, I think our teams belong at this level. With you mentioning the fact that you were up in PNG for a couple of years, are we about to see the vision of you parting with your lunch? Or <laughs> no, is that for <laughs> Kiwi Football Fix After Dark? <laughs> we, we, said we, we said we would never speak about Port Moresby on camera, Goran. Oh, sorry. Well, I mean, look... We'll leave that for another time. Uh, I'll, I'll still try and convince Seamus into releasing the vision. My uh, onside vision is of Chris Wood. Chris Wood scoring his first goal for Nottingham Forest. And what a way to do it. What a, an opposition to do it against. Manchester City humbling the champions and scoring in front of the faithful. The service had been lacking. It was kind of like Wendy's back at the Pakaranga Plaza when I was a teenager. It'd stand around for ages waiting for something to happen. And it never did. But for Chris Wood, on this occasion, boom. Right place, right time. And I liked the run as well. He was close to the ball on the right-hand side, Seamus. 
and he realises they're going down the right flank and he peels out to go back stick. Times has run to perfection. Yeah, you must have had a line into the city ground on because you've been banging on about that service for a while now. I Finally got it. Yeah. So good. So very good. And we'll talk more with Chris Wood. He, um, he called through at some god-awful time, but as I said at the top of the show, when Chris Wood calls, you damn well answer. We'll get to that soon enough, but first of all, Maya, the football ferns have been in action a couple of games throughout this playoff series, but uh, losses to Portugal, five goals to nil, and Argentina, two nil. What have your impressions been of their performances in those two games? Um... I mean, I think everyone has seen, you know, if you haven't, if you're a football fan, you've, you've seen uh, that the Portugal game was not good enough. And, you know, they've, they've all come out and said they're very disappointed. It wasn't good enough. They had all the good intentions, but they were just off the pace, not defending well, both as, as individuals and as a team. Um, yeah, just, just not gelling. And it was, it was, it was hard to watch, to be honest, the, the Portugal game. And, um, uh, you know, a lot of tears were shed mm. from those girls. Um, you know, for, for, as a, a ex-football fan, I'm very, very passionate about the team and and them doing well. And I know the football community want them to do really well. So when you see see a performance like that, it's 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 really hard because you you know I know the girls, I know what they they want to do and what they want to achieve, and it's just not happening. Yitka Klimkova has um, spoken about changes are required for improvement. What are the changes that need to be made? Oh, look, it's, it's hard. Like, uh, I feel like we, we haven't really progressed since the last World Cup, and there's been changes, there's, um, there's been different personnel brought in, um, but, you know, the, the rest of the world is improving, and it feels like we haven't yet. So what does that mean? I mean, they, they said they needed to, to work on that. There are small things to work on, which they did against Argentina. They, they, you know, it was the grit and the the fight that they were really missing. That's a that's a really football fern thing that that they were missing against Portugal, and they bought that. But we're we're not scoring goals. Like grit and intensity still isn't scoring us goals. So I'm not, I'm not sure what what the changes are. We're five months out. Um, you know, do do we bring in something, someone different, a couple of different players? Um, you know, to, to just, just throw them in there and see what happens. We tried a different system um, against Portugal, which which didn't go well, but, but Seamus, you think 3-5-2 is a... Yeah, I mean, I, I, was, I was at Waikato Stadium for that match and I thought the first 30 minutes, the Ferns were excellent. They were in the game, um, they looked compact, they created a few opportunities. I thought the front third looked, um, looked dangerous. We put the ball in the back of the net, it was yeah, disallowed. again. <laughs> Took a little bit of steam out of the sails, but for me, the alarming note was the drop-off after that point. It was like the last hour of that first match against Portugal particularly, the wheels really came off. And you talk about grit and determination and tenacity, and those are almost go-tos for New Zealand teams. Mm. Mm. They're, they're the things you can almost bank on and rely on. Concentration, I think, is another one. You know, just individual errors at the back, allowing players to nip in, to sneak the ball. And it was. It was a really tough watch. And I, I can hear the, the, the concern in your voice or not wanting to come out and really hammer this team because the noises from inside the camp are the same. They, they know it's not good enough. Um, and they're trying to, to arrest things and turn things around. But... Like you, Maya, I don't know where the solution is. We talk about bringing players in. The only person I can think of, the only player I can think of, is bringing in Millie Clegg. But mm. what pressure does that put yeah. on a teenager's <laughs> shoulders for a Home World Cup? Yeah, but the sooner you bring her in, the better it is for not only Millie Clegg, but also the football ferns. I think by delaying her entry into the squad, you're actually hampering yourselves and the player as well. Would you agree with that, Maya? Because you need to, you need to give her the tools in order to perform on the world's greatest stage. Yeah, I mean, like, look, if Millie's anything like her mum, she would, she would, like, her mum is like a captain of the, the Black Sticks, um, world-class player. Her um, determination and her, her, her grit and skill is definitely something Millie has, and she's kind of like water off a duck's back, Millie, but I know it's a lot, of, a lot of pressure for a 17-year-old, and she'll take it on, um, but, yes, you do need to get her in, I feel, sooner rather than later, and, and you know, just... Give her a go. Like, what, what can you lose, really? Like, we've got nothing to lose, do we? Totally. No. And Seamus, do all of the problems 
almost just melt away if you bring in somebody like Millie Clegg at the pointy end of the field. And then also Rebecca Stott, who's out with a hamstring niggle. You bring back Rhea Percival. Annalie Longo is touch and go for the World Cup. But with those three or four players, are all the problems gone? I don't think so. Mm. I think it's deeper than that. I think it's, it's you're not just shifting personnel. I think, as Myers, to Myers' point, I think the world's moved in terms of women's football. And I think, unfortunately, we've been stagnant. And I've always been a firm advocate for OFC. I've said it at the, at the top of the show. But we do need to get out of, out of playing that opposition regularly and, and playing more matches. As I say that, I think we've played loads of matches. We've played international opposition in the lead-up to this World Cup. And something's just not clicking. The players can see it. The players are talking to it. The coaching staff are seeing it. They're talking to it as well. It just needs to click on the field. And, and hopefully, one more chance against Argentina in our, in our backyard in this window, we can still see those improvements. I think Michaela Moore said we are improving last night, but um, or a couple of nights ago. Um, but it's still not good enough. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard. It's hard as a fan yeah. sitting in the stand because you're willing the team to do better than what they are, and it's just not happening. Who knows, maybe they'll have greater success when they finally get out of Waikato. Uh, Seamus has been uh, enjoying the Ford Football Ferns in his hometown. Uh, the ever-improving Hamilton. Let's take a look at Seamus's experience with the Ferns. Kia ora, Seamus here, Ambassador. Welcome to my hometown, Kirikiriro Hamilton. We're at the beautiful Hamilton Gardens to welcome the participating teams for the FIFA Women's World Cup Playoff Tournament. At the end of this, three teams will qualify for the tournament proper in July. It's a great feeling for us to be here. Um, we are very excited to start the tournament and hopefully to come back here in, in summer. It's uh, been lovely today. You know, I really have enjoyed the welcoming. It's nice for other countries to see our culture and always love a good song. What's the best thing about Hamilton? Oh, the best thing. Well, I'm kind of like, it's my family is the best thing about Hamilton because my family live here now. So I don't know if that really counts. Got to give a little shout out to the Hamilton Gardens. How good are the Hamilton Gardens? Oh yeah, the gardens are great. Like I'm, I'm hoping to get married um, in Hamilton um, in January next year. So um, yeah, that will be where my wedding is. So it can't be that bad. Argentina! 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 Yeah, amazing opportunity for the kids to come and see some, some world-class football. The football here is really growing. Uh, go the Hamilton Wanderers, by the way. Biggest <laughs> club in New Zealand. A lot of Argentinians are here now arriving from our country and it's the first time we be able to support this team, especially the girls, knowing that they are coming to play to New Zealand this year. So it's very nice to have them here. Of course I'm one of them. Football fans! This is great from Betsy Hassan now. the cross into Wilkinson. Off to left charge, surely. Save by the keeper, Jale. And it's the back of charge. Jale's filled out towards the right into towards chance we'll watch the assistant referee's flag it doesn't go up the ball's on the net the flag has gone up on this near side where is the ninth taken by rodriguez right for this time and hit it in and they have got a second to be honest i think we just need to get better we need to learn how to score goals um we had a it was much better than the last game so that was an improvement but it's still not good enough so uh, we really need to change something and we've not got long to do it. We had moments where we played really well and I think we just need to build on that. Um, but obviously disappointed with the result. So it's good for us to have the same opposition. We know already Argentina, how they play. We play them today. So that can be very helpful. And we have to have those, we have to have those positives much more uh, on the field than we just saw today. We just can't seem to escape this ambassador chat on the Kiwi Football Fix. Nor can we escape ambassadors because we've managed to squeeze out one in the form of Seamus Martin <laughs> and welcome in another, Mickey Foster. Welcome into the Kiwi Football Fix. And more importantly, congratulations on making your Football Ferns debut on Monday night. How surreal was that experience for you? Oh, extremely. It's still, still sinking in, for sure. And to let alone make your debut for the Ferns, it's incredible. But to do it in your hometown and home stadium is something that I think will still be sinking in for a long time. Tell us how it all played out, because you came in as a training player, mm -hmm. replacing your Phoenix teammate, Grace Wisniewski. So yeah. at what point were you aware that you were actually a chance to, to debut off the bench against Argentina? 
yeah, obviously it was a little bit of mixed emotions with, with Grace because she's one of my close friends, and but she was extremely excited for the opportunity that, that came for me. Um, but yeah, and then obviously un unforeseen circumstances kind of led to me making that full squad team and yeah, I guess I wasn't really fully expecting it, but I was ready if it ever happened and got the chance last night and just grabbed it by the reins and kind of ran with it. How comfortable were you? Because, mm -hmm. you know, you, you've played abroad, you've played uh, locally here in New Zealand, you've played for the Wellington Phoenix, and mm -hmm. was there a noticeable shift or a step up from A-League to international football? Yeah, it's definitely, I think, a change of speed a little bit in play and kind of that speed of play is that next step up and that's what we all kind of aim for is to get there. Uh, but yeah, I've played, I guess, all the levels now, so it's been pretty exciting to see how I kind of handle different situations and um, the nerves were definitely there last night, but obviously the coaches were ready for me to get on, so that gave me all the confidence to kind of go out there and enjoy the 30 or so minutes that I got. What was, what was the chat that you got from Yitka when you knew that you were going to make a, you know, that you were potentially yeah. going to come on, what, what was that like? And, and were you, did you expect to actually come on? Did, did she give you the nudge or...? Um, there wasn't too much building up to the game, I don't think. Yeah. Um, probably didn't want to give too much away, which is fair enough. But, yeah, I think when, when I heard sitting on the bench, they said, get Mickey ready, and you kind of get those excitement and nerves all at once. Um, yeah, uh, Mainy came up to me first and kind of gave me a big hug and told me to enjoy it. And he said, look where you are, it's your home ground and family's there. Um, crowd were kind of all supporting me and I felt that and Yik has said the same thing. So obviously a few tactical kind of things to pass on when I go on the field, but she said just enjoy it, soak it all in. Yeah, I mean, I mean you give me goosebumps because I've had this moment myself, mm. you know, yeah. debuting for, for the Ferns and, and um, yeah, I know, I know where you're sitting and the speed is slightly different from yep. um, from what you're used to, and, and um, but you didn't look out of place. so. Mm. How do you feel moving forward? Do you think you'll, you'll, you'll crack into the, the team on uh, on Thursday? How are you feeling confident confident that you'll get in there? Yeah, I think the 30 minutes I got was a great confidence boost. And um, like I said, I, I felt really felt well prepped kind of coming into this camp and came in with an open mind to just soak everything up and learn and grow. And um, wasn't really expecting to get on the pitch, but um, come Thursday, I, who knows? We'll see, obviously would love to get back out there and on the field and kind of do my job, but yeah, I guess we have to wait and see for that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what incredible timing though for you to, yeah. uh, what a time to be involved in the national team set up, less than half a year out from a Women's World yeah. Cup in New Zealand. Like, you've got to pinch yourself to yeah. <laughs> see how lucky you are, right? Uh, yeah, and and what, what do you think you might need to do in order to cement a spot in that squad come World Cup time? Yeah, like you said, it's a great time to be involved and unforeseen circumstances led, led to it. But, um, yeah, I think i just got to go back to my club environment with Phoenix and kind of keep doing what I'm doing and keep pushing for that starting spot there and um, continue to learn and work on things that I've learnt at this camp and kind of take that away and um, to grow as a player and, and person as well and keep showing Yitka what I can do and hopefully that can be enough. And if not, I know there's future tours and camps and World Cups to get involved in, but being involved in this one, it definitely gives you a taste for it and feels more, I guess, realistic as well. So, yeah. I think you've done it, Goran. What have I done? You've managed to get through the entire interview without it. <laughs> well, we're still going, though, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> still going. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I, the elephant like I, in the room. I'm, I'm the... not going to talk about it, Mike. <laughs> I said I'm not going to talk about it, and I, I refuse to talk about it. Well, um, there, yeah, there were, well, there was a shot of your family, and they looked yeah. very, Oh, very, now you're talking proud. about it. Oh, I'm just talking about You said family. you wouldn't bring it up. Oh, OK, she, so Maya's allowed to? Obviously, your dad or black coach, but, you know, put that aside. I saw the shot of your family, huge yeah. amount of pride on his face. I mean, you must have looked up and, and seen them and what, what was that yeah. like for you? And Oh, definitely, and even even the first game on Friday night, I spotted them in the crowd and I, I know I didn't get on, but still to be involved in that game was, was huge and knowing that they were there, it was pretty cool. And obviously last night it was a bit, bit emotional a little bit after the game, for sure. And um, my mum's come up to me and told me that she now can't watch an All Blacks game or a Ferns game without being stressed. <laughs> so she can't relax. So yeah, I've ruined sport basically for us. She can't watch football or rugby and enjoy it anymore. So, 
but um, no, it was huge. And um, yeah, to have both mum and dad there, it was, it was very cool. And had the sister there too. So all the immediate family still in Hamilton. So it was pretty cool to have them around. Mickey, back in October, you weren't even a professional footballer. Mm. You get signed up by the Wellington Phoenix and now here you are, a national representative. Mm. What have you made of your rapid rise? Yeah, it's been a pretty insane six or so months, I think. Um, the goal was to kind of always make the Phoenix and I knew that's where I needed to be in that environment to push for a firm spot. Um, but yeah, I've loved, loved the Phoenix and being a professional footballer and in New Zealand, to be able to say you're a professional footballer is pretty incredible and getting to play in Sky Stadium every other week is in front of home crowd has been amazing and yeah it's been quite an uphill journey the last few months and quite quite quickly too but I think I've just kind of soaked it in and pressure's come with it but um, I feel like I've handled it all right and kind of making the most of the minutes that I get on the field. Where do you prefer to play because you're multi-talented, multi-faceted, <laughs> left foot, right foot, have you got a favourite position? Uh, I do. I do love left back, like kind of getting up and I think crossing is probably one of my favourite things to do, especially. You're bloody good at it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I enjoy. I, I love assisting. Is probably my favourite thing. So love getting in a good cross. Um, but yeah, I played a little bit of midfield before signing with the Phoenix and kind of again those kind of through balls and stuff. But yeah, I think probably left back is probably where I probably feel most comfortable now. So. Okay. Yeah. Well, I look forward to seeing you more uh, in that position for the national side. Look, uh, on this show, um, some of our jokes don't quite hit the mark, and I'm about to attempt one that is probably right. going to fall That's flat. Okay. Yeah. But um, look, there have been an absence of goals for the Ford Football Ferns lately, and in order to score more goals, we need to create more chances. So, how does Olivia feel about human cloning? <laughs> Love your chance. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> we'll just we'll just oh, wait for that terrible. to sink in. That's... We'll just wait for that to sink in, eh? Oh my goodness. You, you get it, like Olivia yeah. Chance, create yeah. more chances. Yeah, we need more yeah. of Olivia she Chance. Got it. Okay. I got it. Yeah. I'm really sorry yeah, about that. Too. I just yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, I know. Yeah. It was pretty cool. We, she came up to me after the game. Was like, oh, we need to take a photo. She was like the two Hamilton girls, and she was like two predominantly left footers too. So it was quite cool. So. That was cool to share that moment with her too. And I remember playing a little bit of club with her in Claudelands way back in the day, so just for half a season. But, yeah, so that was pretty cool. Brilliant. Yeah. Must make it easier as well getting into the, the national team set up when you're familiar with so many players oh, around yeah, you. Yeah, definitely. A lot of the age group girls that I went through were kind of there, so to be amongst it with them again was pretty yeah. cool. And um, a few of the older girls that I knew, like, obviously Stoddy's a Wybop girl as well, so... Yeah. Um, and she was at Portland's for... It. A tiny bit, I think, too. So that was, that was, it was cool. Felt very welcomed into the team. Geez, you got a busy week left to run, don't you? You got the mm -hmm. Ferns up against Argentina in game mm -hmm. number two, three of the series, and then at the weekend, Phoenix mm -hmm. up against Sydney FC at the same stadium, North Harbour Stadium yep. in Albany. Mm -hmm. Good luck for it, and congratulations Thank once you. again on making your debut. And thanks for stopping by, sitting no on the worries. couch with us here at the Kiwi Football Fix, Mickey. No, I enjoyed it. Cool. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Thank you. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant awesome. stuff. And uh, where, where are we going after that? Oh, that's right. Yeah, from one uh, national representative to another, a fern to an all-white Chris Wood. He called up at some ridiculous hour. But, of course, we here at the Kiwi Football Fix, we answered the call. Here is Chris Wood. All right, so let me just check the clock. It's um, currently 19 minutes after 2 a.m. So apologies in advance if none of this makes sense. But we're going to the UK to have a chat with none other than Chris Wood. Nottingham Forest's Chris Wood. Chris, great to have you on the show. Most football fans in this country would know you as an absolute patriot. So we've got these games against China coming up next month. What are the chances that you put on the white kit once again at Auckland and in Wellington? Look, there's only, there's only one option for me, and it's always to come home. Um, I'll be there um, as long as I'm fully fit and fully right, which I plan to be. Um, I've had my flight through this morning, so I'm all ready to go. So uh, it'll be great to be back home again. Hey, um, how much attention have you been paying to this all-whites head coaching gig um, stuff? Because we were told that we'd have a coach by Christmas. I wasn't sure if it was 2022 or 2023. Have you been paying much attention to it? 
Yeah, I mean, we were along the same lines. We were hoping it's done by Christmas, but these things happen in football. Um, sometimes it gets pushed out and it gets changed um, and deadlines don't get met, but that's life, that's football. Nothing really goes to time schedules. Um, but no, it's all about focusing now. We've got Bayes obviously there as the intern, ready for the March games. I'm sure he's, well, I know he's preparing right. Uh, I've already spoke to him. Um, we're preparing to, to take these games on head on and uh, come out with a positive result. If it doesn't work out for, for Darren Baisley, um, I'm suggesting maybe a, a three-way coaching scenario with Seamus Martin, the Spoon, Jacob Spoonley, and myself. Uh, because Spoon's smart, Seamus has the banter, and, well, I just want to get in on the act. So um, are you for or against that um, three-way? Look, after that three-way, you, you haven't even said anything about football, so I don't know if that's going to go down well. You've got, you got brilliant banter, and then you just want to be a part of it. So... Uh, I don't think we're going to have a fantastic four years if that happens. Well, look, uh, full disclosure, I do have a coaching certificate from Manico Institute of Technology from 1999, so that could come in handy. Oh, there you go, it works. I think we're onto something. <laughs> look, you've had a very successful career in the UK. Uh, it's awesome to see some football ferns heading over your way as well. What have you made of the uh, acquisition of numerous football ferns in the WSL? Look, it's fantastic. Um, I think that's what they want to do. They, they want to they grow their game and grow how they want to play. And playing abroad for them is probably uh, truly special to be a, a part of a, a footballing world. And with the WSL, it's, it's only going bigger and better. Mm, and that experience in the WSL will certainly help when it comes time to play this World Cup on New Zealand soil later this year. How big will that be for New Zealand? Do we understand the, the ramifications of hosting a FIFA event like this? It's going to be great for the Ferns to play on home soil in a World Cup um, and see where they can get to, um, which will be great. And then you never know one day if it works well between Australia and New Zealand. Um, you never know taking a, a, a men's tournament out to that side of the world would be fantastic. And it's a great start and a great eye-opener for FIFA to see if our side of the world can produce a good tournament. A wee taste of Chris Wood. We'll have more later in the show. Seamus, he reckons that we can host a men's World Cup. Fred de Jong's gone on record as saying it cannot be done. What say you? I think Fred's right. I think we will struggle. And I, the reason I say we oh, struggle... Chris Wood says it can be done. Yeah, yeah, and Chris Wood can do a lot of things, but uh, bringing a World Cup to New Zealand might be just outside of his reach. Why? I think we'll come unstuck in terms of the capacity of our stadiums. Um, it's a money-making exercise. FIFA want bums on seats, and, you know, we're sort of sitting around 25,000, 30,000 for most of our stadiums. I think Eden Park's probably the only one which is over 40,000, and that's probably a reason why we wouldn't be able to have too many actual venues here in New Zealand. I don't know, Maya. I reckon we could... We could get it sorted. We've got enough time to just put a few more seats at uh, Sky Stadium. We get two venues, uh, and then FIFA will be happy, right? <laughs> just two. Look, um, <laughs> it would have to be uh, in collaboration with Aussie. Yeah, at least. of course. Like, we can't do it on our own. Definitely can't. We couldn't do the women's, and that's 32 teams. You expand it out. Definitely can't do it on our own. Been up in Qatar, the stadiums were, you know, 80, 80 90 capacity. So built, purposely built, so, um, and that's what FIFA want, right? They, like Seamus said, they just want people to come, and people do come, it's the biggest, it's the biggest um, a sporting event in the world, but you want more than 40,000 people coming to these, to these um, shores. Okay. So, yeah, so I, I'm probably with Fred and Seamus. <laughs> All right, well... Uh, Sorry, mate. <laughs> so, <laughs> happening. Sorry. Yeah, so, so I, I tried my hardest, but uh, look, we've got more chance of um, creating ambassadors than getting the... Uh, the men's FIFA World Cup a lot to of New Zealand there. shores. There's so many out there. Uh, Chris is backing the Ferns to get the job done at the World Cup. Why should we be confident? Um, because we're Kiwis and we, we, you know, we're the underdog and we end up sometimes, you know, putting in the surprise factor. Um, I don't know, maybe if the Black Ferns can do it with seven months to go, the, the football Ferns can pull something out as well. They've got we need Wayne Smith. We need, maybe, we need Wayne Smith. <laughs> it's not a crazy idea to look outside of our sport, though, it's right? Not. To no, look it's at not. what's been successful. And we've done it before. Mm. Totally. So, um, at this point, we've got to look outside the box, for sure. Mickey could drag in Fozzie. Well, she, she could. He's got a... He's, got a he's busy this year. He's got some sort of World Cup of his own he needs something. to yeah. Yeah. focus on. <laughs> so he might be out of the picture, but... But, yeah, um, 
I, like everyone, like all Football Fern fans um, that are on, on their bandwagon at the moment, I'm really hoping that something comes together and we can see them, A, win a game and two, get out. Um, and I've just got, just, I'm just very hopeful. Mm -hmm. I think one of the positives that came out of the two matches in Hamilton particularly was that the fans didn't drop off despite the performance of Portugal. They still fronted up um, at the match earlier this week. Let's hope they front up at North Harbour Stadium. And, and I think uh, there's a lot to be said for home support. There's a lot to be said for seeing friends and family in the stands um, and not wanting to let those people down or, or wanting to perform to the best of your ability. So we, we've got some time up our sleeve. We've got some matches to come. Again, all of the noises coming out of the camper that there's improvement on the way. Let's just hope that that is coming. Speaking of fronting up, Seamus, wow we The Wellington Phoenix did in... Oh, man, they were so good. After a couple of weeks uh, of disappointing results, they finally got back into the winner's circle and they scored a penalty too. 3-0 winners over Western. Check it out. Rufa. Threaded through the gap beautifully. It's Janssas! And Jamie Young got a vital touch. Here's Jan Sass. Cry up to his right. Sass going alone. Oh, it's a fine finish. Really, really good goal from Jan Sass. 1 0 for the Phoenix. Yankovic to the top of it. Now Moragas. Oh, on his side netting. Goodness me. Bozidar Krajev. And it was close. Krajev. Driving through that space in midfield again. Bossu Dark Absolutely wonderful from the Bulgarian. Here's David Ball. Oh, it's clumsy by Dumbia. It's a penalty. Dumbia on Bossu Dark who they have not been able to handle. Zavada against Young. He got a hand to it, but couldn't keep it out. And finally, Wellington are successful from the spot. It's a useful pass by David Ball. It's Oscar Zavada and Jamie Young to the rescue again to prevent further damage. His pain. Diamante and Wales. That is an incredible save by Oli Sale. Pure reflexes. They come again. Weston have clocked off. Zavada, surely. It hits the frame of the goal. It looked easier to score for Oscar Zavada. And Young got a touch. The complete performance by Ufuk Tale's Wellington Phoenix. And it's got us all thinking whether that was the best performance of the season. Point one of the three, Nicks, Seamus. Was it the best performance of the season for the Wellington Phoenix? Well, the KFF WhatsApp chat would suggest it was. It was really going <laughs> off. There was pinging all night. But, um, look, there's been a few. It's, it's hard for me to go past the Sydney game. I hate to be... I feel like I've been quite negative on this show on everything that you've suggested. But yeah. the, the fight and the grit and that, um, that Sydney win for me was, was something. But this was a commanding performance. Yes, uh, Western aren't flying right now. Yes, it was in Tasmania. The bottom of the table. <laughs> yes, it was a, yes, it was in Tasmania, where unfortunately there wasn't, didn't seem to be that much of an atmosphere. There was no one there. But to, uh, with those two factors, to come out and to win a game that you should win in commanding uh, fashion, that's what you want from your team. So, yeah, kudos, kudos to the Phoenix and kudos to that Mantello. Yeah, and they could have tripped up like they did previously at Sky Stadium when uh, they, were, they were up and they lost to the same opposition. So, yeah. Credit where it's due. Uh, MacArthur FC, 4-1 at Sky Stadium earlier in the season. I think that is of a similar sort of uh, ilk, if you like. But um, it's just nice to see them back in that territory where they're playing their best football. And speaking of playing their best football, point number two, Maya, Bojadar Krajev. He's been quiet for a few weeks. He was back to his best and he really commanded that attacking third. I mean, he, he's, he's got some vision and his, uh, his shot, I think this is the goal coming up, yeah. where he just sees that goalkeeper's off and, and he, he gets it in there and uh, if, that, if he can carry on with this sort of goal scoring for the Phoenix then, then we're in for some, some treats I think. Well that's what you want right, you want your big players stepping up in big moments, I said it all through the World Cup, you know those, those players for those teams did and, and then when you get your, your marquee players or your star players performing generally the performances follow. It was a night where pretty much everything went right for the Wellington Phoenix. We were awarded a penalty and we actually put it away. 
<laughs> That's right. Oscar Zavada steps up and he slots it. Seamus, we've had four different penalty takers, all who missed. Oscar, Bojadar, Costa, Jan, and then finally we go back to Oscar and he does it. Yeah, well, when it's your night, it's your night, I guess. And every, <laughs> everything turned up trumps for the Knicks there. So, yes, great to, uh, to, to break that hoodoo. Um, he's hoping that we have a few more this season and they do go on the back of the net. Is it hard from the spot, Maya? Oh, I was the worst PK taker in the world. Like, <laughs> I was the last on the list to take the PK. I don't know why. It's like this massive goal, one small Tiny man or keeper. woman in the middle, and it's often missed. Mm. Um, yeah, it's a mind game, and it's something that you have to really, really practice. And I don't, I don't think people understand. It is like a, it's a psychological. You've got to practice. You've got to put all types of scenarios in. Um, and I think a lot of, a lot of players hit it in the same place mm -hmm. a lot of the time and goalkeepers will yeah, study that won't they but sometimes if you can't get it you can't get it but you've got to be very confident <laughs> something I never was so I'll stick to defending okay. yeah big game this weekend for the Wellington Phoenix up against Central Coast Mariners we know the history they flogged us a couple of times a season ago we're trying to get back on level pegging now but uh, this one will be a little testy given that Ollie Sale finished the game last time out, uh, minus a shirt. I think they're still trying to stitch it back <laughs> together. And um, a couple of, uh, well, one massive selection quandary. What do they do regarding Callan Elliott's five yellow cards? What do you think? I think Nico Boxel comes in. Boxy. Tim Payne goes to right back. Oh, really? I've said it. OK. Interesting. I don't know if I want Tim Payne out there. I kind of like him centrally. Let's see what happens. We're trying to fit 10 teams into three spots for the Women's World Cup. Yep, the qualifiers have been on over the last week or so. Here's some of the best action from them. Mike Ball here for Argentina, just steering it inside the bar post. That is a clever finish. Just floating that one off the far post. May look for a second, which would be really important. It's on to get in! What an impact from the substitute! Two goals tonight for Gabrielle Ongin. Over the top, or oh, this could really open up now. Borgella again. Borgella, great touch, and surely scores. And they are turning this into a rout. The strength here again from Borgella. Just a touch there and composed with the finish. And the Blue Magpies again, and again it's Yenping Chen who's been really prominent. Into the six-yard area, what a goal from the captain! It's a wonderful finish! The cross was superb, but the finish first time. And here come Paraguay again. This is the equaliser, and it's the equaliser from Lish Chamorro! And it's saved again. Chamorro scores. And Paraguay are through to the playoff final. Time to measure the cross. Acrobatic, stunning goal. Absolutely brilliant. Marta Cox with a goal to light up any stage in world football. Tenacity from tight, and here's an opportunity, surely to open the scoring, and they do! Tony Star, Ginantoya! Well, fantastic action there, just three places left for the FIFA Women's World Cup, and great news coming out of FIFA HQ. Ticket sales for today's games, all proceeds will go to Cyclone Relief. So great to see FIFA lending a hand to those that have been displaced from our recent weather events here in New Zealand. Yeah, wonderful stuff indeed. Look, um, these matches, they've got us pretty fizzed for what is going to happen later in the year, come July, in the World Cup. And so while I've got a couple of legends on the couch, let's uh, pick the brains of said legends and make a few predictions. Who do you reckon is going to win this thing? when it's all said and done, Maya Jackman? Oh, I'm going to go England. England? Yeah. Just off the back of, you know, the Euros, um, they're still tracking really good, uh, sorry, really great. <laughs> um, just a complete team at the moment, so I'm just going to put it out there. England. 
But you know USA exists, eh? I, I do, yes, and they um, are not to be sniffed at. <laughs> <laughs> and they are a team that can win big tournaments. So I, I am aware um, of them, but I'm just going to go with England. Yeah. Fair play. I can't go past USA. Ah. I, um, Why would you? Yeah, they were <laughs> super impressive when they came down here last month. Um, they've got everything going for them. I think it'll be a huge surprise if they don't win this World Cup. Mm. And, they, and they weren't even really firing, were they, against us? So they hadn't had much game time as players. You know, their their, um, their season hadn't really or had, was in, in on a hold. So, I mean, yeah, that's that's them as at a mediocre. So. You know, I'm still going to England. <laughs> you, you can't, you can't, you yeah, can't back out of England now. Yeah, yeah, you're done. It's, uh, yeah, it's set in stone. I'm with you, Seamus. I think there's nobody who can beat the States. What about a surprise package, a, a country to watch? This is going to sound strange, but I'm going to go with England. I think <laughs> it'll be a surprise. It'll be a surprise if anyone beats the USA, but I think if one team could do it, that would be England. And, and to Maya's point, if they can, mo can maintain momentum from the UEFA women's... Uh, Euro, um, then they'll be they'll be in with a shout. But anyone to beat USA would be a surprise for me. Uh, I'm going with Spain, bit of a dark horse. Um, they just lost to the Aussies, didn't they? Yeah, they did. Um, but you know we're five months out, and it was a three-two. Um, not not that much in it. Um, they've got a really great um, women's league going now in Spain. So they all of them are basically, you know, in Spain, centralised, either playing with each other or against each other, and they're a team on the rise. They're, they're pretty high up on the rankings as well, which often doesn't say much. But, um, but yeah, I, I, I think they're a bit of a dark horse, yeah. I'm going with Canada, and I, I don't know in what way they're going to surprise, because they've got such a quality line-up. Uh, they, they won Olympic gold in Tokyo. But there are, there's so much stuff going on behind the scenes at the moment. Player strikes, mm -hmm. Canada soccer is getting involved, threatening legal action against the players, saying you need to play, you can't strike. The She Believes Cup is ongoing at the moment. It, it must be a huge distraction, but we know of the qualities that they possess. So Canada's a surprise, but I don't know in what way. Mm. <laughs> it's a bit like your Belgium pick. Yeah, it's a little it's bit like Belgium from the Men's World the Cup. Cup. What about your player to watch, Maya Jack? Oh, mine's Sam Kerr. Um, plays for Aussie, 29. Played, plays for Chelsea, captains Chelsea, captains Australia. She's like, you, you look at her accolades and they're just as long as this room type of thing. And so I'm looking forward to seeing her um, play, lead Aussie, do a few backflips. Great, great goal celebration. So, you know, such a great player and I'm really, really excited to see what she brings and what Aussie bring, actually. Another, mm. another dark horse, I think. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to go with a, a home-based player as well. Um, it might sound a bit glass half empty, but I'm going to Vic Essen. Mm. Um, I think what we've seen, New Zealand defensively will be under the pump during the World Cup, and I think she'll be called into action. But her performances, um, when she has been custodian for the Football Ferns, have been fantastic. And I think it's a platform for her to really make a statement, maybe earn a move to um, a, a bigger club in one of the more established leagues around the world. I, I just love her story as well. You know, you know, she's just been grafting, grafting, almost gave up. Now she's in sort of number one keeper at the moment, just and such a great person too. Totally. Mm. My player to watch, Rose Lavelle uh, of the US midfielder. We saw her. Uh, in Wellington and again at Eden Park. The, the trickery, the creativity that she possesses, I feel like she could unlock any defence and she's almost worth the price of admission alone just watching Rose Lavelle. Um, and, and that's probably one of the, the main reasons why America, the US, will go on to win this tournament. So, yeah, those are our predictions here on the Kiwi Football Fix. What say you? Let us know on social media. We, we need to get, like, a social media page going, don't we? Like a Kiwi yeah. Football Fix Instagram so. page? Yeah. TikTok going. Yeah. Get it? No, I don't know about TikTok. <laughs> I don't dance so well. Middle-aged white man. These days. Is that what you have to do on TikTok? No, no, just you, dance? Don't to, you don't have to dance. No, you don't have to dance. You just have all to sorts. Great content. Mm. Look, I want to I want to bring it back to something a little more serious now before we go Kiwis around the world. Jono Ross, who's a, a friend of the show, you would have seen him uh, in our very first episode this season. Uh, he writes for friendsoffootball.co.nz. Uh, his, his house was utterly devastated in the recent Auckland floods. And anybody who knows Jono knows that, uh, well, he, he needs certain things in order to function in his environment. And the first floor of his house was decked out with equipment to make his life so much easier. He's a, 
he's in a wheelchair, right? And uh, so particularly devastating for him, uh, the Auckland floods. So what's happened is there's a give a little page set up to help out Jono Ross. He's, he's been displaced from his home for a number of months after these floods. So please, look, I know that we're asking a lot of our football family in these trying times, but if you can, please give generously to John O'Ross and his family so that uh, he can get things back up and running. All right, Seamus, let's go. Kiwis around the world, who's doing things and who's doing them well? well that Friends of Football side is a gold mine for Kiwis abroad and who's doing well. For me, great to see Sapret Singh back on the pitch, scoring goals for Jan Regensburg in Germany. Also scoring goals, but in the wrong end, was Joe Bell. It was a, a, a Kiwi Joe. derby in Denmark. So Joe Bell for Bromby uh, against Elijah Just for Horsens. Um, Bromby ended up winning that one 5-2. So while he did get an own goal, came away with the three points, which was great. Libby Kakachi featuring for Empoli versus Fiorentina. That was a one-all draw in the Serie A. So fantastic to see Libby back on the field as well. We had Marco Rojas, a Colo Colo assist. Shout out to the Chile women's team here in New Zealand as well. He's doing it all. <laughs> uh, Matthew Garvitt. Uh, NAC Breda making his debut for them. He had Nando Pineker and Max Mata in the uh, in the Irish League, and an interesting one. Bill Tuiloma traded after a long time with the Portland Timbers to FC Charlotte in America. I think there are a lot of Timbers fans that would be sad to see uh, to see Bill go, but uh, he's been shifted across the the country. And a little shout out to our under twenties who are in uh, Indonesia at the moment. They had a hell of a time trying to get a squad together for the first match against Guatemala. I think nine players. Um, didn't make uh, didn't make it to Indonesia for, through travel delays. They lost that one 3-1. They then backed it up with a 2-1 win over Indonesia, and they play Fiji tonight. So uh, a lot of Kiwis in action abroad. I, I, a snapshot of what's going on there, but um, if I can encourage the, the football family to get behind Jono as well and, and yeah. Just, yeah. Uh, just to give a little so we can keep getting this great level of information through to the football family here in New Zealand. Good on you, Seamus. That, uh, you know, lots of Kiwis doing so much around the world and summed up succinctly and brilliantly by yourself. All right, to so the English Premier League, and uh, I don't know what's in the water and if the goalkeepers are sharing water bottles, but there are some strange things happening. Emiliano Martinez, you know, he wins the World Cup with Argentina, but he comes back to the Premier League with Villa and he scores this spectacular <laughs> own goal. That's and then he just... decides he's going to go up for the corner to try and draw things level. Oh, boy. And then he doesn't get back in time, and well, he's just trotting back. You needed Liam Reddy in that situation, didn't you, really? Sprinting. The Terminator, yeah, right? Just like down. charging the T1000. Yeah. But no, nah, he, he doesn't really care much for, um, you know, urgency. We've got a grab from uh, Unai Emery, the uh, Aston Villa coach. This is what he had to say after watching Emiliano Martinez do what he did. I've never told my goalkeeper to go to score one goal in the 92 minutes because maybe, pff, I, don't, I don't know the data, what is, maybe one goal of, of, of 100 and maybe 20 times they are doing the, the transition and they are scoring 10 times goals. And, and today, it happened. And for me, it's not really be smart, not really be consistent in uh, how we want, we want to play, how we want to compete. So, um, consider himself told off? <laughs> Pretty much. No, no hand gesture this time from Martin... Martinez is there. Um, <laughs> putting those hands well away. Yeah, well, didn't use them. Used the back of his head, but no, he was well told off. If he had the trophy, he could have like, launched it down yeah. the field, <laughs> got the ball out of the way. Uh, also in the same game, I don't know if you've played FIFA before on PlayStation or Xbox. Yeah. Sometimes the game glitches, right? Uh, we had a glitch with Aaron Ramsdale, who dives the wrong yeah. way for Coutinho's goal. Look, it's going near post, and he's like, oh, get out of the way. Maybe Coutinho gave him the eyes. Sometimes if you get the eyes, you, you go the wrong way. You'd be furious if you're playing <laughs> in the privacy of your own home yeah. and your goalkeeper does that. But this is Premier League quality goalkeeping, Maya. Yeah, no, I'd, I mean, I'm Seamus, you're a goalkeeper. Yeah, what, what I've been was, given the eyes what, a few times was, and drove the wrong what way. What was going on there? What was happening in his I, I reckon he is. I reckon Coutinho's given the eyes, looked one way and shot the other way, and it's just thrown him off. That's, yeah. the, that's okay. the skill of the player. Not to be outdone was Nick Pope of Newcastle. Newcastle losing to Liverpool, Shames. How good was that? Very good. But Nick Pope decides to fly out of the box. Ooh, Not only that, handle the ball and get sent off. <laughs> and they go on to lose 2-0. There's real spoonly elements to that, isn't there? And I'm glad you mentioned that, Seamus. <laughs> I'm so glad you mentioned that, because Nick Pope has channelled Jacob Spoonley. It's almost a case of who did it worse. 
as we review the Jacob Spoonley <laughs> footage from that one time against Hawke's Bay. Because look at this. He's about as far out from the goal line as Nick Pope. But he doesn't stop the goal. However, he remains on the field, Meyer. Yeah, and he doesn't try and pick it up outside of his box. So, yeah, you know, I think Spooners did it better. Yeah. Did he? <laughs> or worse. Is it I mean, worse or better? Say otherwise. Going? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, absolutely ridiculous scenes. But, look, you know, Jacob Spoonley, you could almost say that he's English Premier League quality after that. <laughs> yeah, is. based on that footage, yeah. 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 Based on that footage. Uh, speaking of the Premier League, seriously, if we could for a moment, though, Manchester United, a 3-0 win over Leicester. At what point does everybody start talking about their tilt for the Premier League title, Seamus? Yeah, it's a frustrating one because we've been dining out on them doing so poorly for so yeah. long. And uh, I was one of those ones that was saying, if Ten Hag comes in, it's going to be a five-year process, it's going to be a rebuild, but... It was like a five-month process. He's really turning things around very, very quickly. And, it, yeah, they've got a, a, a smell of blood, I think, and I guess silverware is, uh, is in their sights, but it's hard to argue when they're, when they're winning matches as comfortably as they are there. Maya? Well, I mean, you know, as was there a culture thing that wasn't really gelling before this and, and maybe he's really good at, you know, getting the right players in and, and getting out of their way. <laughs> you know, sometimes that's what you have to do. Mm. Get out of the way of, of, you know, pick the best people, get out of their way, let them do what they need to do. Yeah, and maybe the stumbling block's over in Saudi Arabia now. Yeah. And that's why they're really flying at the moment. Mm. Who knows? Mm. Manchester City won, Nottingham Forest won. Does that mean with... Chris Wood's goal and Erling Haaland failing to score, that Chris Wood is better than Haaland? Yeah, I think that rudimentary, that rudimentary summary would yeah. suggest so, Goran, but so. Um, I think there's a... about He missed some shocking opportunities. <laughs> I mean, we talk about FIFA glitches with Ramsdale, the robot. Uh, he needs some oil. Yeah, I mean... I guess that's the standard that we're holding him to, isn't it? How do you miss this? Oh. Yeah, that is not great. <laughs> How did you miss that? <laughs> that is not great. The programming just went awry, Mike. <laughs> if that's if you hold circle too long. Oh, I thought it was like a double pump of square. Yeah, hold circle too long <laughs> and the power, button, the power button goes up. There's your tap-in at the back post that you love so much. Yeah, oh, show. mate. It's, yeah, Harlan couldn't, he couldn't do that that day. <laughs> yeah, I'm just so pleased that Chris Wood finally got some service. Mm. And I'm so pleased that I was able to hang out on the couch today with... An icon, Maya Jackman, and the sartorially elegant <laughs> Seamus Martin. Which jacket is he going to bring in next week? <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> Thanks so much for your time. Appreciate it. Great. And uh, can't wait to see what the football ferns do next, right? Yeah, I'm looking forward to Thursday, actually, and, and hoping that, you know, what, they've, what they're saying from the camp, that they've still got more to come, that, that we see that. And, uh, and I, I'd love to see a goal. I'd love to see a goal yeah. from the girls. Yeah. Yeah. That's think, not offside. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the prerequisite, right? Score a goal, be onside. My thanks to Seamus and to Maya and to you for watching. We leave you with, well, more of Chris Wood. I'm not going to wake up at 2am and not show you more of Chris Wood, for goodness sake. So here's a lot more of him and we'll see you next time on the Kiwi Football Fix. First of all, let's talk about it because Chris Wood going to Nottingham Forest. How many puns have you been subjected to? <laughs> yeah, it's always going to be the way. Um, I think there, there was a few thrown out um, on signing day. Um, but no, nah, it's, a, it's a good cliche that people bring out. Why Forest? And, and what was the thought process around going out on loan from Newcastle? Look, yeah, it's a, it's a long-term um, plan and goal of mine. Um, there's, there's a good opportunity to stay here through, um, further in the career for, for a few more years. Um, which is something that um, prolonging my, my career would be, was something I looked into. Um, and then speaking to the manager here um, and understanding his process, where he wants to take the team, um, where, the, where the squad and the, the team and the club has come from from last year, moving into this year, it all looked like it's on a, an upward trend, which was fantastic to see. And to be a part of that could be another good thing. Um, and ultimately getting back out and playing football. Um, it's been a, a mixed season, um, being a bit part player um, at Newcastle, but being able to get out there and play week in, week out is a, is a massive key for it. How big of a draw card was Nottingham Forest, the club itself, because it has such a, a rich, storied history in UK football? Yeah, it's, the history speaks for itself. It's huge. The fan base is huge. Um, you don't go and win the titles that they have throughout their career, European champions, um, for, for no reason. Um, it's a big club steeped in history and legacy. Um, so it's, it's great to be a part of. 
um, another another great club that I'm fortunate to pull on the shirt for. Um, but no, it's brilliant to be here. I mean, I've had a taste of the fan base so far. Um, it's great, it's good, and hopefully it'll get even better. How tough was that first up game against Bournemouth, the 1-1 draw? You played without having actually trained with your new teammates. Look, yeah, it's a, it's a bit different. I was lucky enough to get an hour's training with them uh, on the Friday, and then we travelled straight down to Bournemouth. Um, it was always going to be difficult learning a new formation and trying to understand the new formation, new team, um, new players and how they work. Uh, but that's, that's what it's about, getting in the deep end. Um, you learn on the pitch better than you do um, on, the, on the training pitch. Um, you, you understand people's traits and tricks, and uh, that's where you want it to be. You're a bit of a survival specialist, I suppose. You helped Newcastle out of a tricky situation last season. And Nottingham Forest, they are out of the drop zone at the moment, but obviously battling for survival. Um, how do you feel your confidence in making sure that Nottingham Forest stay a Premier League side for next season? Look, yeah, I mean, that's, that's what I've done uh, a bit of my career, um, having to battle with relegation. Um, it's a tough job, but it's the experience I have that can bring to this group. Um, a lot of boys haven't been in the, the fight of the relegation before, um, coming from different leagues and things like that around the world. They might not have had to, to graft and, and understand what goes into a relegation battle. So um, we've, he's brought in good players for that sense of understanding what it is to, to fight and, and get yourself away from the, the relegation zone, which we've started to do, which is good. Um, and we just want to keep progressing and get further up the league so we're not watching behind us.